Ait Squecho, Joni Olson Vanasne, Sarvapa First Nation is my home community. I am a Sandwich person. My name is Joni Olson. I um, uh, work at the Sandwich Leadership Council, but hopefully we'll just be answering the questions today as uh, per who I am as a Sandwich woman. Ashka. To me, it means uh, uh, to care for the environment uh, in which the, the animals uh, that we hunt and that we fish live in. It's more of like, a, how can I contribute to um, our territory to ensure that there's proper habitat and food um, for the things that we hunt and fish? It also means that um, it provides the ability to hunt and fish for um, whatever needs that my family may have, whether that be for food or for financial gain, because that's also a, a need of a family. I do think that historical activities included management and trade. I've been a student for many years and I've sort of made it my work to read through uh, a lot of historical, anthropological or interviews that our people have done historically and there's definitely a lot of information on um, trade of clams with the interior nations, replanting of a species from one area to another area of land so that we can cultivate in different spaces um, than where it was or to rehabilitate if there was loss in a space. You know, so our, our people historically actively took part in, in managing the lands so that they could, you know, uh, um, build clam gardens as big as they possibly could, transplanting clams or cultivating the, the clams, not just harvesting, but the turning of the soil, those types of things. So, yeah, it's very exciting to think about those things because it just means how it like it brings sort of the perspective of how active our our people and our societies were out on the land and in for care and management. Economic rights in a modern context, um, yes, but it's complex. Right, because we try and stay really true to our culture and we work with our people to do that. But the modern context is that we've been so overly urbanized that to implement our treaty as we would have historically just as lived on the land is almost impossible. So I think we have to get creative in how we do that. One of the objectives that I would have is land back uh, for all purposes, but for conservation, uh, hunting reserves, those types of things. So that's something that I'm very interested in. But also I believe that we hold sort of the underlying jurisdiction of land. So like if land was never sold, when we sit with government bodies, they often talk about how they don't have the ability to negotiate or discuss fee simple land because they don't own it. But I've always said, you know, if you wanted to put a highway there or a road through there, you would just appropriate the land and do what you like with it, which provides a pretty good example on how the government actually still owns land underneath fee simple property owners. So if you can think of it in that way, I believe that we actually have ownership and jurisdiction under, like a layered jurisdiction underneath where uh, the jurisdiction of the government lies and that we should be able to share in economic activity that happens at that level. And at that level, economic activity is usually taxation. That's what the government does, is there to apply their jurisdiction to land. So every time a house is sold, um, they receive 12% property transfer tax. And that property transfer tax just goes into the general coffers. And that's how the government applies their underlying jurisdiction over land. And, uh, you know, it would be one of my goals moving forward to access that property transfer tax. It wouldn't increase taxes for, for fee simple landowners. It would just be uh, a redirection 
of that property transfer tax that would actually be linked and connected to our, what we consider our jurisdictional mode. There has been a very uh, calculated assault on our people that has left um, our communities in poverty and governments are now looking to divest from the sort of Indian problem that they have and are wanting to discuss things like self-government. Governments have resources that they can work with and we as Indigenous governments don't have resources left to work with. But we get left with huge problems in housing, social development, pollution on land, um, those types of things. So two things going forward that we need are sustainable development or sustainable income, which usually comes from development. Um, so land back in terms of not just conservation as we were discussing before, but land back in terms of allowing us to create business like they have done over in Vancouver but also compensation for past so that we can actually invest into our communities to bring you know, some standards of living, um, housing or health, uh, actually even just for loss, you know, a reparation for loss for things like hunting and harvesting lands so that we can actually maybe purchase lands back also and have a little bit more control of how that happens would be uh, kind of the, how I would think we should move forward. The communal voice for Douglas Treaty, and I've been sort of in politics for quite a long time, and it's a controversial question because we see our rights as individual rights. But uh, my dad's court case to me, and I use this as an example, is you know, um, you. Uh, get charged to an offense under the Douglas Treaty or under the Provincial uh, Wildlife Act. You get taken to court, you go to the Supreme Court of Canada, you win um, using the Douglas Treaty as a tool in court, and the outcome of that case applies to everyone. And so as much as we like to think it's an individual sort of uh, act or a treaty, um, it very much applies to us as a collective and the effects that we feel of the land that was taken, the lack of healthy food, uh, and our health issues, we feel those as a collective. And so I was actually talking to, I was in a meeting the other day, I was talking to uh, uh, Slyn Amo and um, uh, Chimanas, First Nations, and they were like, you know, Indian Reserve uh, 11, 12, and 13, Chimanas Indian Reserve 11, 12, and 13, all come out and vote in council elections. And I'm like, what? Like, how come we're not Xanich IR number one through 13 or 11 or however many reserves that we carry as Xanich? So that colonial structure came into our territory and created us into four separate First Nations. And you then sort of say, Wissanich, you know, under the territorial declaration, and as we have always been historically known, because we weren't, didn't actually become separate reserves until the 50s, 40s or 50s, you know, have been separated out and have uh, colonial government structures that actually prevent us from moving forward as a collective. If you look across Canada, there's tribal councils in the Okanagan, there's tribal councils in Manitoba and Saskatchewan that are utilized to bring the collectives together, to talk about things together and to make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward. And I have a belief system that if we do that with a united voice, then we're more powerful. And I don't want to say that I would take it as far as sort of amalgamation into one nation, but we definitely need to have a collaborative table. Do I think that like one of our communities could do that job? Just with the change of governments and the change of administrations and the change of, you know, times, uh, I would fear a lack of consistency for you know, the other nations involved that maybe aren't sort of at that table, a lack of accountability structure. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but um, 
Uh, I would say that right now the Kusanich Leadership Council really our foundation is to work with the people in the position that I sit in. I want to grow that. One of my main objectives to get more Kusanich people involved in, you know, uh, how we think about how we want to move forward because it's not just sort of my job. It's not just Sarlip's job. It's not just, uh, you know, a, a small group of people's job, it's all of our jobs. So I do believe that there needs to be sort of a place where we can come together collectively to talk about how to move forward with our, um, with the things that we've talked about today. Thank you.